Hello there, my name's Kay Sandal and I've been working with the team at Harriet Watts Learning and Teaching Academy to develop some bespoke resources to help you implement assessment for learning. I just wanted to share a few thoughts about why this is so important to your students' experience. Assessment for learning is all about ensuring that as far as possible we design assessment and feedback processes so that the learning oriented elements are emphasised as much if not more than the measurement ones. In practice what this means is firstly making your assessments as authentic, engaging and productive as possible so that students get enthused and engaged when they're doing them and ideally can see the point of doing assessment just beyond getting the marks. What we're aiming for here is to prime students for deep learning experiences which foster the kinds of dispositions we require of graduates and which spreads their attention across a period of study rather than leading to short-term bursts of effort for an end of module assignment or in the case of exams the memorising of material which they soon forget. Now, we know that assessments which do this often do certain things. They mirror real world applications of the subject matter. They feel like the kinds of things practitioners actually do in the world and they broaden the skills, qualities and dispositions that will equip our students for the longer term. And they give them plenty to reflect on or talk about in say job applications, or which give them a sense of becoming, becoming a researcher, an engineer, someone who can make a difference to communities and so on. And importantly, these qualities thrive in assessments which have real world outputs with a clear sense of audience. Things like well, know, professional blogs, intray exercises, website creation, making guides or information leaflets, which are aimed, for instance, at the general public or at younger students. I imagine you already have lots of examples that work along these lines, so it'll be really good to share them. But we've uh, flagged up a handy toolkit to make this as, do as doable as possible for practitioners. The second main area of assessment for learning is to focus on devising formative assessment opportunities for your students. Formative assessment is a process that's used by educators and students while students are actually learning something. Basically, it provides feedback which helps educators and learners decide what to do next. In other words, it's about doing things in our teaching which help students to see their current levels of knowledge or competence, to realise where they need to be or what the expectations are, and help, it helps them see what strategies they could use to close the gap or do something else if necessary. In order to support students' success, achievement and well-being, this process needs to be timely, so it needs to be integrated in the learning and teaching, not just at summative assessment points. The pedagogic tools or tactics that people use to provide formative assessment can take a whole host of forms depending on the context, the discipline and so on, but the key conditions are, firstly, we strike a good balance between formative assessment which develops and supports learning and summative assessment which sums it up and codifies an individual achievement and presents it in a form, certificates, grades, classifications, that sort of thing that can be used beyond the programme. Secondly, we create opportunities for students to try out their learning, practice and improve, helping them build confidence and competence before they're summatively assessed. Now, this isn't necessarily about having dry runs of an assessment. It's about building in a variety of formative group and individual low stakes tasks and activities, which give students chance to have a go, build confidence and learn by doing, experimenting and taking risks while they get to grips with stuff rather than simply listening. Thirdly, we also need to create feedback rich learning and teaching environments. We're increasingly recognising in higher education that to improve learning, it's really important to focus our attention on students' active engagement with feedback processes. So we need to frame feedback as an interactive future-facing process in which students have an active role to play. This doesn't necessarily mean teachers doing more marking, quite the opposite. Good feedback designs incorporate ample dialogue, and by dialogue I mean interaction, not necessarily one-to-one -one conversations. 
Good feedback processes feed forward with students developing insights that allow them to adjust and change their future performance or learning strategies. So learning-oriented formative assessment tactics that engage students in ongoing sense-making and involvement and designs which emphasise uptake and transformation are hallmarks of quality feedback processes, not just the feedback comments we produce and deliver. There are suggestions for efficient and effective tactics which teachers can use to provide developmental and manageable feedback opportunities in your What Works guide number three. And don't forget to help your students also recognise and use informal feedback opportunities that flow from active learning and student involvement. That's learning through participation because these bring with them an intrinsic supply of informal feedback to benefit student learning. Finally, we need to pay attention to formative activities which bolster students' abilities to take ownership of their learning and hone their reflective skills and self-assessment capabilities. Involving students with drafting criteria, generating feedback, making comparisons, that kind of thing, are all ways of helping students actively develop a better understanding of learning goals and to engage in sense-making about the meanings of criteria and standards. So we're in involving them in assessment and feedback processes, in making judgments and generating self or inner feedback. Again, this doesn't mean getting students necessarily involved in marking, but it does mean inviting them and supporting them to reflect on their own progress in relation to expectations and goals, and helping them to develop the capacity to make informed, evaluative judgments about their work and that of others. Once more, there's lots of practical ideas for how to achieve these things in the What Works guides on the Learning and Teaching Academy website, and there's more pointers in the suite of new resources we've just been working on. So thanks for listening. Good luck. Let us know how you go. get on. We hope you find the resources useful.